Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our new lecture. In this particular lesson, we are going to study about the biogeochemical cycles. Okay, in the previous lecture, we have studied about the energy pyramid. Okay, we have seen that the energy is going to decrease according to the levels. Okay, there are certain trophic levels, and as we go to the apex point of the trophic level, the energy is going to decrease. But from this that is biogeochemical cycle what we are going to study we are going to see the transfer or the mixture of gases or the production and then dispersion of the gases okay and certain elements in the atmosphere okay so as we have studied that the flow of energy was one way okay the energy flow in the ecosystem was one way okay but the nutrients, the flow of nutrients or that is biogeochemical cycle, it is not one way, it is cyclical. That means one level, then second level, then third level, then again the first level is repeated. Okay. So after certain levels, the initial level is going to be repeated. Okay. And the process is cyclical. That means it is performed throughout the year or throughout a period and it is going to repeat after a certain interval of time okay now this biogeochemical cycles it depends on the nutrients okay and we all know that for any living organism the nutrient is necessary for growth okay so we are going to study about biogeochemical cycles in this particular lesson so the cyclical flow of nutrients within an ecosystem is called the biogeochemical cycle. What is biogeochemical cycle? It is the flow of nutrients, okay, which is there in the ecosystem, okay. And this flow is cyclical flow, that is, the links are repeated, okay, after a certain period of time. So, such type of process or flow is called as biogeochemical cycle. Okay, now nutrients necessary for the growth of organisms are continuously transferred from abiotic to biotic factors and biotic to abiotic factors within an ecosystem. Whatever nutrients are responsible or are necessary for the growth of organisms, okay, so those nutrients, from where do we get these nutrients? We get the nutrients from the resources present on the earth, okay. And these resources are obviously abiotic factors of the ecosystem. So, we human beings or other living organisms are the biotic factors. So, we get our nutrients from abiotic factors. Okay. And this transfer of nutrients from abiotic to biotic and biotic to abiotic factors is carried out within an ecosystem. Okay. Now, this cycle operates continuously through the medium of the biosphere formed by the lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere so you will find that the cycle is carried out within all the parts and portions of the earth okay as we all know that earth is being made up of lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere and all these three spheres along with the biotic and abiotic factors is called as biosphere so all the cycles are operated inside this particular biosphere the recycling of biological geological and chemical sources of nutrients in this process is a complex process and depends upon the level of energy transfer in the ecosystem so the sources of nutrients okay obviously the nutrients are being transferred out of these three spheres, okay. Tino, ye tino sphere mein se kisi na kisi sphere se nutrient kya hone wale transfer hone wale, okay. So ye jo nutrients hai recycled hone wale, matlab ek baar used hone ke baad again they are going to be used or they are going to be transferred or converted into another form, okay. So this recycling of this nutrients, okay, which are extracted from biological or geological or chemical source, okay, is a complex process. ये जो प्रोसेस है रिसाइकलिंग प्रोसेस न्यूट्रिएंट्स का ये क्या है कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रोसेस है और ये एनर्जी लेवल्स के ऊपर डिपेंड करता है ओके नाउ देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ बायोजियोकेमिकल साइकल्स 
first is gaseous cycle and another is sedimentary cycle okay so what is gaseous cycle an accumulation of the main abiotic gaseous nutrients materials is found in the earth's atmosphere it includes nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide water vapor etc etc so this gaseous cycles by the name itself you can understand the nutrients are going to be in the form of gas okay and this abiotic gaseous nutrients okay which are found in atmosphere are going to be transferred from one form into another form are going to be used by the living organisms for their own growth and they are going to be recycled via complex process okay so which cycles we are going to study a nitrogen cycle oxygen cycle or co2 cycle okay there is again a water vapor cycle as well now sedimentary cycle this is an accumulation of the main abiotic nutrients materials is found in soil sediment and sedimentary rocks etc of the earth okay now this type of cycle that is sedimentary cycle it is regarding the soil okay and the sediment or sedimentary rock so this the nutrients which are present in soil or which are present in rocks okay their accumulation their cycle is considered as sedimentary cycle okay so what components or nutrients are present in soil the components like iron calcium phosphorus etc okay these are the components present in soil are very important nutrients for the growth of living organisms okay but in this chapter we are going to deal with the gaseous cycle so the gaseous cycle is a speedier cycle than the sedimentation cycle okay the speed or the process of gaseous cycle is faster than that of the sedimentation cycle for example if co2 has accumulated in an area it is quickly dispersed with the wind or absorbed by the plants okay suppose this gas carbon dioxide it is mixed in a particular area or it is released in a particular area then it is going to be quickly dispersed with the wind ye bahut hi aasani se hawa mein mix ho jayega atmosphere mein mix ho jayega aur jo plants hai usko bahut hi jaldi absorb kar lenge okay matlab yahan pe jo cycle ka process hai jo co2 hai uska absorption aur use jo hai wo bahut fast tha quick tha okay now climatic changes and human activities seriously affect the speed intensity and equilibrium of these cycles hence various aspects of these cycles are extensively studied nowadays now these cycles okay gaseous cycles uh, the speed of these cycles or the intensity of this cycle is going to depend on our human activities okay whatever activities we are performing it is going to affect the cycles okay and the climatic changes are also going to affect the gaseous cycle okay now these cycles are being studied very carefully and why these cycles are studied carefully because these cycles are going to affect the growth of the living organism okay as we know this cycle are regarding the gaseous nutrients okay nutrient materials and nutrients are used by living organism for their own growth so it is very much important to study this cycle in terms of understanding the growth of certain living organism or species okay now do you know the cycle of gases in the sedimentary cycle cannot be completely separated from each other though these two types of cycles okay it seems different from each other but they are cannot be they cannot be separated completely from each other there is certain similarities or relations between these two types of cycles for example nitrogen is present in the form of a gas in the atmosphere and in the form of compounds like nitrogen oxide in the soil and sediments similarly carbon occurs in abiotic form mainly in coal granite diamond limestone etc in the earth's crust and in the form of carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere generally carbon is present in plants and animals for a much shorter duration than it is in coal okay we have to keep in mind okay while studying these two cycles as carbon dioxide okay it is a gas but we should know that this carbon it is also present in soil okay it is also present in uh, materials abiotic materials like uh, coal granite diamond limestone okay and 
the carbon is there in this sedimentary rocks also or sedimentary portion and also in the atmospheric portion of the earth okay so there is certain relationship between these elements or these compounds okay as in nitrogen also we can see that nitrogen is present in the form of gas in the atmosphere but it is also present in the soil and sediments in the form of nitrogen dioxide okay so these two types of cycles gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles are interconnected or interrelated to each other and are very much important to study okay by studying these two types of cycles we can understand the growth of other living organisms okay so in the next lecture we are going to see different types of gaseous cycles okay until then goodbye